Okay, so we're now, after some technical difficulties, ready for our first proper session, which is the current and past DPLs. Okay, so everyone can hear me all right? This is going through the microphone, it sounds like it. Um, I'm Anthony Towns, I'm the previous DPL. This is Sam Hosevar. I can't pronounce French or Hungarian or whatever it is. Yeah, Slovenian. I can't pronounce French Slovenian either, so. Um, our current DPL. Um, so I was, um, I woke up and completely just changed what I was going to say because I was thinking back to the 2005 Debian um, DebConf. And at that, I was scheduled for a ridiculous early talk and was jet lagged and did this horribly depressing what's wrong with the project before my debootstrap talk. And I had a look over my notes for that and all the things that were wrong with the project. So the, the time then was just after Sarge had been released and we're now just after Etch has been released. And um, some of the things that I had on my list that were all going terribly wrong was that uh, we weren't accepting related projects like Debian Women or having Alioth really well supported or using AMD64 and we didn't have a live CD. Uh, we seem to have all those things now though. So um, we also didn't really have a very effective policy process at the time and the tech committee wasn't doing anything and I think we now have a full um, contingent of the tech committee here and we're down to one or two open bugs. Um, the policy team is any of the policy team here? Can you stand up? There should be a Marga here at least, and an Andy maybe, and a Russ. Is that a Russ? Okay, I haven't met Russ before, so I don't recognize Russ. Oh, okay, so we have a bunch of lazy policy people who don't get up in the morning, fair enough. Yeah, that's fair enough. So well, you can either just catch tech committee people and policy committee people and get everything sorted out there. And um, what else have we got? We've got fairly current versions of apt in the archive and we've got lots of new features in apt like internationalization um, that have been on the drawing board since 2002 or earlier and they're actually in the archive and in experimental and being used and tested. Uh, we've now got a graphical installer, which we didn't at the time. We have live CDs, we have current versions of Xorg, we have 2.6 kernels. Uh, we have lots of new features for the bug tracking system. Um, 2005 was just shortly after, or the DebConf 2005 was when we were still in the Vancouver controversy and we were gonna support PowerPC and AMD 64 and maybe keep supporting i386 and everything else would go kaput. Instead, we've managed to up the standard of all the architectures, including M68K, and we're even essentially still supporting M68K for Etch. Um, we have LSB support for the first time ever. Uh, we've resolved the GFDL questions and stuff. So in a couple of years, we've actually kind of turned around my horribly depressing sort of, this is my take on the project and every single one of those points has been done much better. And I mean, I can't take credit for that myself. It's basically everyone in Debian who's done an awesome job, so. Okay, and my, my talk followed on from that with the actual debootstrap thing, which it was meant to be about, and that kind of segues into DebConf here, because about the only thing I've done so far is um, committed debootstrap to DI subversion. So we now have a team maintained debootstrap. And we've got, yeah, we don't have a team maintained if up down yet, but maybe we've still got a few days left in the week. Um, and we've had a, quite successful DAC boff, which gave me a huge to-do list, which my computer crashed and now I no longer have, so I need to watch the video again when it comes up. Okay, so how are we for time? Do we have plenty of time yet? Yes, good. Um, so the DPL stuff um, was kind of not what I was expecting. I don't know if it's ever been what any newly elected DPL has been expecting either. Um, it, really gave you less, a lot less time to actually do the stuff that you wanted to do rather than just respond to queries and stuff. So the first month or so, which I'm sure Sam's now experienced is a, a huge flurry of press requests for interviews and comments and what's it feel like to be DPL now? Uh, I don't know yet, I've only been DPL for a week. Um, 
And after those have kind of died down, then suddenly you don't get press requests anymore because, hey, the only thing that's interesting in Debian is DPL elections, right? Um, and instead you start getting arguments between people that you need to try and come in and resolve even though you've got no idea what they're really talking about. And once you've got, once you've got that done, you're expected to do regular DPL reports, which usually means you haven't actually done anything, so you then need to find other people who've done really cool stuff that you can kind of take the credit for and report on, and it's all exciting and interesting, but you've just been, been talking to press people and trying to resolve, res resolve conflicts, which hasn't been succeeding, so you've got nothing to say for yourself. And so yeah, that's, I, I think you've still only done one um, bits from the DPL so far? Or have you done another one since? Yes, yeah, so we've still only got one bits from the DPL on Devel announce this term, but I'm sure that'll change after this week, because Sam will have lots of other people's stuff to take credit for. <laughs> um, and the, un the only thing that the DPL can really do that's vaguely interesting is actually spend SPI's money, which of course I've tried to do and not succeeded in some parts, but in other parts worked much better. Um, and so uh, flying people around, getting meetings organized, I think there's going to be a publicity meeting uh, sorry, a mailing list team meeting uh, in a few months that hopefully Debian will be supporting. And last year there's been um, a, a, a events team meeting for the Germans um, and Austrians, I think, that uh, Debian supported through FFIS's funds. And basically getting people together at times other than DebConf is a good thing and Debian's got a fair bit of money that is more use being spent on developing Debian than just sitting in a bank account earning a little bit of interest. Um, and so I think I'll pass on to you now. We'll have questions at the end if we've got time. Thanks, AJ. So hello, everyone. I'm Sam. I'm your new DPL. And I'm going to talk a bit about why I'm here and about the future now that AJ has talked about well, the past and uh, near future. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm here because you voted for me. Um, I'm going to, to talk more to the inside people, so if there are people here who are not DDs or not expecting to become DDs in the near future, uh, there's probably not much for you in here, uh, except uh, what I'm going to say about our user base. Um, two major points I had in my platform were having um, a sexier distribution and a more efficient, efficient project in terms of um, organization and process. So I guess that if I'm here, uh, you mostly agree with that point of view and I'm going to explain it a bit. So why a sexier distribution? Uh, because we're not alone. Uh, this is a graph of uh, uh, Google Trends for uh, major distributions. Uh, in yellow, you can see Ubuntu, and red, green, and blue are Debian, Suzy, and Fedora. So this is just Google Trends, so it's maybe not very, uh, very meaningful, but you can draw a lot of graphs that have roughly the, the same shape. For instance, this is the... Uh, distrowatch.com user uh, hits per page, so it gives another idea of uh, what new and um, what I call more sexy distributions are, are going are doing actually, and uh, how they can take a new user base that wasn't interested uh, at all in Debian before, and that we may have failed to uh, to take to Debian, or maybe that it's the logical step, uh, have them go to uh, more user-friendly user distributions and uh, end users targeted distributions and then take them back to Debian uh, to help us improve Debian and become DDs and so on. That's not... Oh. Whoa, what happens? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay.
Okay, um, a six-year distribution is not only what I or the developers want, but it's also what our users want. Uh, we've been talking to them about the Linux or the open source desktop for years now, and it's starting to happen. And I guess a lot of people are saying exactly the same thing every year, but now uh, we're um, we're beginning to see a lot uh, and a lot of desktop-based distributions that are really usable and do not require any, any non-free or uh, Windows-based stuff. So it's really the time that Debian needs to react and focus on the desktop. I don't mean by that that we should uh, disregard uh, other uses for Debian, but desktop users are a huge, huge user base and we should not ignore them. Um, I don't. I also don't mean that we've been ignoring them. We should. We should just uh, work more on them. Um, a desktop is not just a launch menu with uh, a list of programs that you have. That's the 1995 desktop. Now we need documentation, translations. We need to integrate all the software together so that it works well. So that you can drag and drop stuff from one application to another. Uh, we need screenshots so that users know what they are going to install before installing the software. Uh, we, we need icons so that the menus uh, don't not, do not only have um, uh, do not only have uh, the name of the application because open source software developers like to use very cryptic names for their applications. So it's a lot of stuff that we need to put together that the upstreams do not necessarily do and that Debian can provide. Uh, we have a huge package repository adding switch screenshots or icons to each of our packages is a huge task but we can start doing it and everyone can benefit from it. It's also QA. QA is not only about uh, having policy compliant packages, it's also having uh, general good quality. Um, I don't know if you can imagine a world where um, not having a man page could be an RC bug. Uh, I could very well imagine that and I hope it wouldn't be fixed by just adding a Linton override or something like that. But having a man page is very critical for some kind of users um, and these users do not care about building their package on MCCK. So Maybe what we um, what we are thinking of the QA needs to to focus also on these users. So uh, everything I'm talking about is already happening. Um, if you have read the the release team announcement from this week about the plans for Lenny and for the stable release team and so on, you'll see that. We are now committed to faster release cycles, which is, in my opinion, a good thing, to more frequent point releases with more stuff in the point releases. The, the operation of volatile also goes in, um, in the direction of having more up-to-date stuff in Debian for stable users. We are likely to see a K3BSD port in the official release if everything goes well. Uh, we will have a new architecture which is ARML, very likely. We might see open Solaris amongst our ports uh, when some licensing issues have been dealt with. Uh, everything is almost in place and patches are here for uh, multi-arc, which just needs to happen now. And there's a lot, lot more of new stuff that's going to be in uh, the next Debian and the other uh, Debians after this one. So I won't do anything like AJ said because that's not the DPL uh, role to, to do things, but <laughs> I can talk to you about and then pretend I did it. So I only, I only talked about our distribution. Now I'm going to talk about the project and what we do. So. Um, we're not doing that bad because we are 1,000 people. There are going to be 300 people at DebConf, most of whom, most of which are probably DDs, and we are growing every day. 
and that's good, but there are a few things that we can improve and that I was talking about in my platform and I hope to see them happen. First of all, our core teams. Uh, there are people that are, who are really uh, crucial to our project. We could not do much without them. And these people have been doing the same thing uh, ever and ever again f on a nearly daily basis. And so it's quite normal that some things don't get done as fast as before because you always get tired of doing the same thing ever and ever. And they're also overwhelmed because uh, our developer base, our um, uh, number of uh, Debian machines, our number of packages, everything is scaling, but not these teams. So they need two priorities, and joining the teams is not easy, and I'm working on it and trying to, to get things uh, go a bit better. It's not easy because there are reasons, there are valid reasons for everything that's happening, but you need to push the right buttons, and I hope to get uh, a few things done. But you can also help um, by not relying that much on these teams. For instance, if you need a new service for a QA work or something like that, you can just set, up, set it up yourself. And um, I'm sure there are a lot of, of examples where uh, you don't need, for instance, DSA to install a machine. You can just do it yourself. I know it's it's hard to do and you don't always have everything you need, but take Alioth for instance. It's an, an awesome service that's been set up and it does not rely on, on much of our core teams and it's a very valuable service for Debian and it's great. So I'm hoping that, um, that people can do more and more things in the spirit of what was done for Alioth. Uh, another idea I want to promote is to stop owning packages. Everyone is in charge of one or several packages, but um, we are, there's a tendency to own packages and have a very protective behavior towards packages. So just as an email is not a hostile, hostile act, uh, it's just the content of the email that may or may not be, just like bug reports are not, uh, you should not consider NMUs as hostile acts. They, they might be, there, there are hostile NMUs, but um, I, I think a, a few developers are, are considering NMUs like um, uh, an illustration of their laziness or something. It's not, it's just that someone had more time to do the stuff and they did it. Um, there's a famous Wikipedia policy, if uh, you've been on Wikipedia, which is be bold. Just don't hesitate doing things that you think will improve the, the overall uh, status. So that doesn't mean be um, reckless and do anything you want, but if you're planning to do something that can be undone if it was done wrong, I say don't hesitate and be bolder when doing things in, in Debian. So do more NMUs and don't hesitate to improve everything. Of course, do them right, send the patches, uh, send warnings and so on. So uh, the usual rules apply, but don't hesitate to, to improve Debian uh, if, if things are not going fast enough. So there's another problem uh, we're not uh, really mentioning is what if you disappear one day? So, of course, you may believe uh, the whole universe disappears with you. Uh, that's what I believe. But <laughs> um, there's also the possibility that the universe has to deal with that and struggle uh, dealing with your uh, disappearance and, and try to fix things when you're not here. So, there are many ways you can die. Uh, uh, you can simply lose interest in what you're doing, and everyone does that from time to time. You can get demotivated, you can get better things to do. Uh, you can have exams, you can move, you can have children, get married, and so on. Um, so <laughs> you have lots of problems with real life. Uh, that means one day you're going to be uh, 
away from Debian for a while, for a long while, or maybe forever, I don't know. So please try to think about what happens when you're gone, uh, because it may happen suddenly. <laughs> um, there's the problem, well, it's not a problem, but uh, with shorter release cycles, it means everything has to be faster for everything to work. So uh, we have lower tolerance for delays if you want shorter release cycles, and that means that inactivity, even short-term inactivity, has a bigger impact if our goal is a shorter release cycle. So, um, there's nothing wrong with um, going away for a while and just not touching your Debian stuff and so on, but try to think of other people who, who are going to fix the stuff. So in the same way that I'd like to see more NMUs, I'd like to see more NMU-friendly developers, and I'd like to, to see more packages that are handled in a, a revision control system. Elioth no, no has I think every possible uh, revision control system available. Uh, I guess a few are missing, and probably the one you are using, or I don't know, but just request it and it, it will probably appear. And if you give right access to other people, not necessarily backup maintainers, but backup maintainer, maintainers are good, uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, the QA team or anyone interested in doing uh, transverse work on the archive, like uh, fixing uh, package descriptions or uh, doing big transitions that need right access to a lot of packages, it, it can make the life of everyone really easier. So please use Alioth or anything uh, publicly accessible if you can and give access to more people. We should also take back from others, uh, other distributions who do the same things as us. Uh, we're not the only ones who try to integrate software and add icons and menu stuff and have an integrated desktop. So I'm thinking of Ubuntu, of course, but also many other distributions that just appear. Sometimes disappear after one year or so, but the work they did might be useful. So uh, try to integrate their work in your Debian packages. Maybe try to share with the, the developers if they're still here. Um, well, not only desktop files, but also translations. Um, there's a, course, uh, a cool tool for translations that not many Debian developers like because it's non-free, but uh, you may enjoy the results of uh, this tool. And so I wish we would share much more among distributions. Uh, again, I'm not really mentioning Ubuntu, but it's, it's one of the, the main targets of this slide. Um, I'm thinking about uh, Fedora as well, which is not, um, which is quite an old project because it's based on Red Hat, but the community is quite younger than uh, the Debian community, and they have uh, excellent tools that have appeared, and I, I have the feeling that we are not paying attention to, to what Fedora does, um, because there's this, uh, this philosophy of thinking we are doing the best anyway, so we don't need to, to have a look at what other people do. Uh, of course, not everyone thinks that way. That's just a general feeling I have, and I'd like to see that disappear as well. Okay, uh, one of the major points in my uh, platform was communication, because I felt there was not enough communication within Debian, like uh, teams not reporting or uh, stuff being done and done again in different places because uh, no one knew what was going on. So there's no magical solution to that. If you don't have time to say what you're doing, it's probably better that you do it rather than just talk about it. But I hope the, there's going to be more communication. Uh, don't hesitate to use Debian Devil Announce for anything you're going to do or anything you've done. Um, don't think that no one will care because in 
within one year or six months or I don't know, maybe someone will be interested in what you did and will not be aware that you started that project or that you set up that service and so on. So uh, please try to put everything you do in a public place and communicate about it on a public place so that uh, later we can remember that you did that and the work doesn't have to be done again. And of course, I wish we, we communicated better with other distribution. I don't know if maintainers do this on a per package basis maybe. I'm doing it a bit. I think I'm not doing it enough for my packages, so that's a piece of advice for everyone. Uh, have a look at other distributions' patches because they're often good. And take back what's good and share what you've done to your package that might be of interest to the other maintainers from other distributions. And I hope we can improve Debian and the free software as a general um, product uh, together. So I'm finished. Um, thanks for listening and have a pleasant DebConf. Now AJ and I will take questions if anyone has questions. A mic. There's a mic at uh, the bottom of the room, at the middle of the room. You mentioned a sexier distribution. Um, that implies that we have better graphics and even tasteful and well-integrated graphics. That collides a little bit with um, the self-proclaimed uh, graphical abilities of many Debian developers, which are um, below standard, frankly speaking. Um, <laughs> I would like to see some uh, initiative from you, uh, or generally from Debian developers, to really trust in the graphical experts that want to help, but really can't because they don't package anything or are not developers or whatnot. We need to change our at attitude there too. I fully uh, that agree. Was my question, yes. Really. Yes. Um, currently, our uh, our policy for accepting new maintainers is some kind of technical excellence in uh, uh, package integration. Uh, there are a few people who managed to enter Debian without knowing anything about programming. <laughs> Christian. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> um, now Christian knows a lot more about programming, but the important part is that he managed to enter Debian and improve Debian from the inside without doing any programming work. He was just working on translations, which is a, a crucial part of Debian as well. Internationalization is, is really important, uh, as are graphics and uh, drawing icons and so on. And yes, I, I wish we could uh, find a way to, to have more of these people enter Debian in a uh, in a faster way. Uh, comment, it probably, for people with questions lining up behind the mic would probably be useful. Uh, how do you say your last name? <laughs> oh, it, it depends uh, when I'm talking to <laughs> Oh, really. Uh, because um, I don't know how to say it in France, in French, so I say Osvar in French. But when talking to uh, English-speaking people, I usually say Hosvar um, or something like that in a kind of English-like accent. <laughs> um, I, I really don't mind. I'm, I'm not feeling very strongly about how my last name is pronounced. <laughs> Yes. Oh, uh, I, I will repeat the question if you can't walk to the microphone. I was wondering uh, how exactly is the uh, lag in infrastructure team uh, improvements going to be addressed during your mandate as a leader? That is, uh, you were saying, yes, we are going to fix uh, the system administration team and whatever, but uh, how about some details? <laughs> I think okay. we deserve him after all these years. <laughs> okay, well, uh, first, things, uh, first thing that was done some month ago uh, before I was DPL was uh, the addition of the RT system that will help us have a better measurement of what's done and 
what's not done and at which speed it's done. Uh, so I hope by, by using this tool we can convince everyone in the team that more people are added. Um, in a separate um, way, um, I've, I've got uh, a few candidacies to join the team, which I've submitted to the current members of, of the team, and they, they're still discussing them, but I have hopes that at least one more person will be added quickly. Um, I can't say much about it right now because there are other issues that uh, I'd rather kept private for now, but I will definitely communicate on that uh, as soon as I have information. Um, but it's the first team I've been working on, uh, working with, uh, so, so the results, uh, if any, should, uh, should come faster than for the, the other teams. And I'm not sure this satisfies you, but <laughs> that's how things are right now. Um, there, uh, there's at least one member of uh, the DSA team here, and um, oh, well, two members actually, and I'm hoping to have a chat with them. And well, I hope that real life chat will be, um, um, well, we'll get better results than just IRC, which is. Uh, well, you cannot communicate as well, well, at least I cannot communicate as well in, on IRC than in real life, so I'm going to, to talk to them as well. What about Anthony's proposal? What about? Anthony's proposal recently. Uh, and AJ made a proposal on the project mailing list uh, a few months ago, maybe weeks, about the general handling of new members to teams. Yeah, well, um, that sounds interesting. Uh, one thing you should know is that a few teams uh, predate the DPL and the constitution itself and so on and uh, don't believe there, um, are the, the DPL should really interfere with what they're doing. So if there are external um, uh, initiatives to, to address the problem um, as the DPL I'll have an opinion on it, but as a mere developer, I'm all for it. Uh, I just hope it doesn't interfere with uh, what I'm currently doing. But, um, um, how do I say that? Are there any plans to replace these teams with uh, uh, other people who would be more amenable to following the Constitution? Use the microphone, please. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any plans on replacing these teams with other people who would be more willing to follow the constitution and the other rules of the project? And well, if not, why not? Uh, I wouldn't want to, to choose people just on uh, uh, whether they follow the constitution or not. Because uh, there's, we, there's no need to uh, let go of any other technical criteria in replacing people who refuse to listen to any other rules than what they set up themselves. <laughs> okay, um, I tend to agree with you. Um, I just don't think a fight with, between the DPL and these people is the best way to solve things. Maybe just having a GR to, to settle things would be the, the best way to, to handle it. Um, I'm not sure I want to provoke it, but if it happened, uh, I believe it will be the voice of the whole project, um, and well, we'll have to deal with it. So, so if, if enough people, you only need five or six people for that, want to, to do that, well, I'm, I'm all for it. But I don't have the, the, the power to force that. <laughs> The DPL does not need any seconds to set up a GR. So if you're all That's for right. it, you don't need anybody else. <laughs> OK, OK, I remember that. <laughs> Hi. Um, you may be aware that about 20 Debian developers work at Google. We have an internal mailing list, Debian at Google.com, that I, th I think you can mail to from the outside. So you, there are a couple of communications things that we can do to help things out. If you want to present some idea and get it circulated, get it archived, 
there's a very good video team that sets up and records tech talks. So any of us can invite you to give a tech talk, then you can, invite, you can ask to be invited by contacting us at debian at google.com. We can invite you to give a tech talk. They'll set it up, they'll record it, and they'll stick it on videos.google.com. We can also set up um, video conferencing between the different offices for you. So if you're in New York and you want to talk to somebody in Zurich, we have friendly people at both locations that we can set that sort of thing up. Uh, some of the major offices that we can do this at would be Mountain View, Santa Monica, New York, Zurich, Dublin. There's a small office in London, um, and I think there's one in Japan somewhere. Okay, well, that's an excellent idea. We'll remember that okay. as well. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question for Anthony. It's not really related to his being DPL, but I think this is the right form for it anyway. Uh, we've had the release management experiment uh, for Edge with uh, to release manager being paid part of the time in order to try to get release out on schedule. Uh, and with uh, experiment belongs uh, evaluation. And we've had some discussions while the experiment was running, but I don't think those can replace the evaluation. And I was wondering what the plans are for that. Uh, so one of the plans was not to mention it during the DPL thing, to keep it separate, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so I'm starting to draft a report or a summary, but like the, the difficulty with just me doing that is that I obviously have some views already that other people don't share, and it would be nice if we could have the report of the experiment actually come to some um, conclusions rather than just a new round of controversy, and I'm not 100% sure how to do that, so I'm going to, I've got some, a kind of structure for the report that I hope might be useful, which I'm planning on blogging sometime after this session's finished. And then hopefully other people will help, or if they don't, then I'll do it all myself, I guess, but whatever. So um, AJ said that, that one of the things that you end up doing as DPL is uh, indeed you, you get all these people coming to you and saying, will you please sort out my argument with so-and-so? Um, and I always found those very tedious to deal with and didn't really want them. Um, so I wanted to ask Sam whether he had any plans to set up anything to deal with those questions and possibly even to intervene in cases where um, a couple of people have failed to email the DPL to ask them to um, stop slapping each other. Um, well, I, first I must say that I'm, I'm not exactly overwhelmed with emails to the leader address for now, so... <laughs> so, actually, I don't think there have been more than two emails for the last two weeks uh, sent to the leader address. I don't know whether my spam filters are too, too efficient or I don't know. <laughs> um, well, I, I plan to address these issues on a case-to-case -case basis because uh, setting up something right now without knowing what kind of uh, of um, difficult interactions might appear. Um, uh, I don't know yet. That's my answer. I'd, I'd like to make a comment about this, this idea that you should set something up, you know, you shouldn't set something up without knowing what the kind of dispute is. Um, in general, if you want to persuade people that their um, conflict has been resolved with, resolved in a fair and reasonable way, it's generally a good idea to set up the rules beforehand rather than make them up, you know, ad hoc. Yeah, yeah well, I think we have rules. We don't have a policy of enforcing them in a very consistent way. Um, there are going to be at least two uh, boffs or talks, I don't know, about a social committee idea, and I will take part to, to these to these boards and talks, so I have I will probably have a better answer after these talks have happened because uh, you always end up with having um, 
um, technical uh, questions with about how the the uh, the instance will will work and how to renew members and how to assure assure that everyone in in the this instance is representative of what Debian is and whether uh, you want to prevent takeovers of of it and so on. So, um, well, uh, generally speaking, I'm I'm all for having something that deals with these issues. I, I just not I'm just not sure how to to make sure it's the the best way to do it. Um, uh, I say let's do whatever comes from these both and see how it works. And well, also let's hope that we never have to to use it too much. But if you want my my opinion on it, well, I, I'm all for having something like that. Yes. I just don't feel I, uh, I, uh, I don't. I don't have an opinion on how it should work. Just having it would be would be a first step that I would agree with. What ideas do you have about governmental reforms in Debian, and um, uh, speci speci specifically? Um, AJ and yeah, well, he mentioned that he got overwhelmed by uh, all kinds of silly small things in the beginning, and also later on he only mo mostly reacted and said that um, and he couldn't be really proactive about many things that he actually wanted to do. Um, can you imagine using something like a DPL team uh, seriously? Uh, I have mixed feelings about a DPL team because in the past it has been uh, it hasn't been uh, so efficient. So uh, for the moment, I don't believe there's a need for it. Um, but I may change my mind later. Uh, I don't know yet. For the moment, as I said, I'm not really overwhelmed. So I think I can handle everything that's happening. Um, it's not. Um, I'm not going to to just uh, disappear if uh, the the task becomes too huge, and I will not hesitate to delegate. But I like to do it on a per task basis rather than just appointing individuals that are going to the, to be the DPL shadow for for this and this. So uh, I'll wait for huge tasks to appear and then decide whether I take the task or delegate or look for candidates to, to work on it. That's the, the way I'd like it to, to work. Um, yes, uh, there are huge tasks. Well, OK. Um, um, and I said that uh, there are already huge tasks. What are your examples? <laughs> okay. Um, so the idea is that there are already um, um, a huge tasks like having uh, graphical people be integrated into Debian faster. I hope to have a lot of things dealt with in DebConf um, uh, because it's the first time that I see everyone with my DPL hat and uh, that I am in a position to to ask them what are they are going to do about that. So I guess just after DebConf, I may already look for people to join um, action teams to, to work on these issues. Um, so So let's see in one week. I guess the time is up, so if you have any more questions, I will be available the whole week. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and see you. <laughs>